Would you like to have the secret for establishing a super close relationship to your God? Stay with us as we find that secret in God's holy book. Greetings, dear friends. My name is Marvin Clark. And I'm Judy Clark. And together, we're going to look at a topic today that is incredibly important and incredibly wonderful. That topic, the Sabbath. Now, why would the Sabbath be incredibly wonderful and incredibly important? To find the answer to that, we're going to go to God's Word and see an amazing story in the third chapter of Exodus, we'll look at verses 3, 4, 5, and 6. You probably have heard this story before, but we're going to look at it, and you're going to see something new in it this time. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Here's Moses out taking care of the sheep. And all of a sudden in this, this desert, he sees a bush that's on fire. And the verse said the bush was not burning up. It just continued to flame and flame without uh, vanishing. It just stayed there burning and burning. And a voice came out of that bush. And he recognized that as the voice of God. And the voice said, take off your shoes, Moses, because... You're standing on holy ground. Now, here's my question. What made that ground holy? God was present. God's presence, yeah. <laughs> the, the bush over there was not holy. The bush over that way was not holy. And the bush behind Moses had no holiness connected with it. But it was the bush where the fire was coming out and the voice of God spoke, that was holy. And what made it holy was the presence of God in that particular bush. Hang on to that as we go to the creation week in the Bible. We'll look at Genesis chapter 2. Here's the story of creation week. Genesis 2, we'll pick it up from verse 1. We read it this way, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. God had worked six days and created everything that He created in six days. Verse 2, And on the seventh day God ended His work, which He had made, and He rested on the seventh day from all His work, which He had made. Now verse 3, And God blessed the seventh day, no other day, no other bush, God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. He made that day holy. He made that day sanctified or set apart for a special use. Because in it he had rested from all his work which he uh, created and which he made. Now, 2,500 years later, 2,500 years later, God wrote some commandments on two tables of stone, two tablets of stone. And again, he mentions his special day of rest because his people had forgotten their weekly appointment with him. They had forgotten it. So the first word in that fourth commandment is remember. Why? Because they had forgotten it. So Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11 contains the fourth commandment. Listen as Judy shares this with us. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. 
but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. You just read there, Judy, how the, the Lord blessed the, the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And just previous to that, it said the seventh day. Same thing, the seventh day being the Sabbath day. The one that he blessed and the one that he sanctified, which means he set it apart for a holy use. Not that day, not that day over there, but a very specific day he put his blessing in. And that is what made it holy. That's what made it special because his presence is in it in a powerful way, much more than it is in the other days. And we'll see that as we go along here now. Now, he made it really clear, Judy, that we're not supposed to do any work on that special day. I wonder why he said that. What is there about that day that would uh, have him say, I don't want you to go to work on that day? Here's from, from my study, here's what I have found in an answer to that question, okay? The Sabbath day is a day of relationship. I like to call the Sabbath day a date with God. It's a day of relationship. It's, it's actually having a date with God. It's a 24-hour time period of intimacy, intimacy between you and your Creator God, between us and in our Creator God. So the, the, the beauty behind this is that people who love each other enjoy spending time with each other. If anyone knows that, uh, Judy, you and I know it. I think back to our days in San Diego. Judy lived on one side of this mountain. I lived on the other side of the mountain in San Diego. And you can bet that we made uh, plans uh, well ahead to climb that mountain she would climb it from this side I would climb it from this side and then we would meet at the top and we did that many times we would take a little lunch and eat that lunch at the top of the mountain she coming from uh, where she lived with her parents I coming from uh, was coming from where I lived with uh, another family so the highlight of, of our life at that point was hiking the mountain and meeting each other at the top of that mountain now, I was thinking, Judy, what it would have been like if we set an appointment, say, for uh, next Wednesday. Let's agree that we'll climb the mountain. We'll start at 4 o'clock. That'll put us both at the top about the same time, and we'll do that next Wednesday. Well, next Wednesday comes along, and I say, oh, man, I'm tired. Um, I don't know if I feel like going out and hiking that mountain. I'm just going to go tomorrow and, and hike the mountain. But yet... I didn't call you, and you're hiking the mountain. You're up there on top and saying, hey, where is that guy? We had an appointment. We had a date. Where is he? So, so we can't come along and tell God how to, how to operate his program. He tells us. He says, this is the day. This is the time that you and I are to meet for special, intimate, close relationship like we can't have the rest of the week because we have to go to work and do the things that we do. So on this one day a week, don't go to work. I want to spend this quality time with you. It's just you and me. We'll fellowship together like we can't do any other time. Let's meet next Saturday, seventh day. Now, I worked at uh, Hunt Foods in Fullerton, California. Okay, my responsibility at the Hunt's Food Factory was to get that tomato sauce in those cans and make sure that the lid got on the can and those cans were flying by on a conveyor belt faster, faster than I could almost see. They were flying by me. And one time, I clearly remember this, not real proud of it, but I remember it. <laughs> a guy was walking through there and he and his friends uh, were taking these certain medicines, or I can call them drugs, I guess, 
that would keep the people, keep them up at night and so they wouldn't get sleepy because we were on the night shift. And so he was trying to talk me into buying some of these drugs uh, from him so I would take them and not get sleepy and not fall asleep in the job. Well, I didn't uh, yield to that, but while I was talking with him, guess what? I wasn't paying attention to the cans. <laughs> and then I look over there to where I should have been watching all the time, and there was cans all over the floor. There was tomato sauce flying here and there, and I knew I was in a major uh, bind. I was in trouble. So I ran over there to the red button, pushed the button, stopped the whole belt, and got things straightened out. My point is, when we go to work, we have to focus on our work. That's why God said, on this special day of the week, every time it comes around, I don't want you to go to work because I want your full attention and I'm going to give you my full attention. That's the beauty of the Sabbath. Well, what kinds of things, Judy, kick in some ideas here, whatever comes to your mind. Uh, what kinds of things are good things to do on the Sabbath? What kinds of things would we want to do and maybe not want to do in order to enjoy the blessing of the fellowship of our Creator God? Well, we go right to the Bible to find that answer. And that is we look at what Jesus did on the Sabbath. And we find out through the New and the Old Testament what God did on the Sabbath and what he encouraged his followers to do on the Sabbath. We find that it's a day of not self-centeredness. It's a day of reaching out and uh, blessing others. It can be anything from uh, making contact with people that are shut-ins to those that are in the hospital or celebrating a new life or getting children out in nature, getting them out in nature and experiencing God in a way that they didn't have time to experience him during the week. Also, good times together as a family. There are so many fun and exciting things that you can do. They would take longer than this segment to even begin to start to scratch the surface of ideas. Yeah, great ideas. And it's, it's interesting that, that Jesus did seven Sabbath miracles and they all got him in trouble because the people had a warped idea of what the Sabbath was all about. Unfortunately, they saw it as a list of rules and regulations and do this and do this and don't ever do that and don't do that. No, as Judy just brought out, Jesus healed people on the Sabbath trying to get the message to the people that the Sabbath was a day of, of happiness. It's a day to help people. It's a day to go to the hospital and make a visit or go to a rest home and, and, and take the whole family and visit somebody that's, that's laying there on a, on a bed. So we can do good on the Sabbath. That's what God wants us to do. And she mentioned going out into nature. What better thing to do to, to, is to take a nature hike, go to the beach and walk along the water, go to the mountains and walk uh, to a, a stream and take the whole family with you. It's a tremendous uh, thing to do on the Sabbath day. And it's fairly important if you have younger children and even teenagers, give them a purpose for going out for a hike or give them a purpose for going to the beach. Because when you just turn them loose, they wander around and, oh, why are we doing this? You know, we don't understand this. But I found that with a little bit of pre-planning, it can be such a memorable experience. And that's simply like um, for, you know, six days, six weeks, six Sabbaths, you focus on each day of creation. And you do an activity that's based solely on that part of, of creation. Everything from taking a blanket and lying out under the stars and, and seeing how magnificent God is in the creation of the universe mm -hmm. to um, taking a look at animals and going to an animal uh, reserve and letting them observe different characteristics of animals that they've never taken time mm -hmm. to observe. There are so many things we can do. It takes a little bit of pre-planning just to think it through sometimes and ask God, what do you want my children to see on the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. What do you need us to learn so that we can hear your voice through your creation and walk away even more blessed for the week ahead? The Bible calls uh, the Sabbath a delight when you uh, see the Sabbath and live the Sabbath in the right way. It will be a delight. Unfortunately, uh, Judy, I, I have to admit that I grew up in a, in a Sabbath-keeping home, but unfortunately, uh, I did not have the delight part of it. 
and many, many people do not have that. So they're going through the motions of, of observing uh, the Sabbath and not going to work, but they're not having any, any excitement out of it. They're not enjoying it. So the Sabbath is not a delight to them because they're not connected with the Lord of the Sabbath. He's what makes the Sabbath a delight. And I had, when I was growing up, I was not connected with God. And so Sabbath observance to me was a drag. It's something I didn't even look forward to because it was a bunch of rules and regulations. But if you has, have Jesus in your heart, he's your best friend, then his special day will be a delight. Will it ever? Remember in, in Wisconsin, when we were, we were ministering there in the church and, and the school, you were the school teacher and I was the pastor. Uh, one day, a, a dear uh, friend came up to me and said, I have two tickets this weekend for the uh, Green Bay Packer game. And we had a teenage son that couldn't wait to go to that football game. And I said, you're kidding, two tickets? Yeah, and they're, they're yours free. And, and I was just ready to hand out, to reach out my hand and grab the tickets when I said, hey, wait a minute, 90% of those games are on a Sunday, but once in a while they sneak one in on a Saturday. So I just ask, uh, what day is this game? He says, well, this is one of the Saturday games. I says, oh dear, okay. I had to make a fast decision. Would going to that football game draw me closer and keep me extra tight and close to Jesus, the Lord of the Sabbath, or would it tend to take me away from his presence and, and enjoying his, uh, the oneness that I have with him? And I had to admit at that point, you know, my focus is going to be on that football field. I'm going to be watching the quarterback and who, uh, the guys chasing him and who he's going to pass the ball to. And my focus is going to be down there on that grass. It's not going to be on Jesus. So I made, I made a decision right then. Uh, thank you so much for the offer for those tickets. If it was on Sunday, I would take them in a minute. But the Sabbath is our special day that the Lord's given us to fellowship with him in a very close way. And I'm going to decline. But thank you so much for offering those tickets. So people come to me all the time, Judy, and say, uh, is this okay to do on the Sabbath or should I not? Or is, is this all right to do on the Sabbath? or should I not? And I give them one principle, and they'll never ask me again. And here's the principle. I just alluded to it. The principle is this. When looking at what to do and what not to do on the seventh day, Sabbath day, will doing that draw me close to Jesus and keep me close to Jesus, or will it take my attention away from that close connection, that intimacy, intimacy uh, that I enjoy with Jesus, and that's the, that's the answer, okay? Will it draw me closer to Jesus or take me away from Jesus? In that principle applied to any question that comes up will work 100%. You don't need to ask anybody. You can make the decision because the Sabbath is a day of fellowship with our Creator, God. You know, the most miserable person in the world is a person who is observing the Sabbath without a connection with the Lord of the Sabbath. That poor person <laughs> has no happiness in Sabbath observance, and to him or her, it would be drudgery. So the number one thing, establish a connection with Jesus, and then the Sabbath kicks in and will be a delight. Okay, Judy, there are people watching and listening right now who would be wanting to ask you this question, so I'll ask it for them. What can a parent or a grandparent do to make the Sabbath a delight for their children? Not a list of rules and regulations, but to make it a day that the kids can't wait until that day comes around. It's like having a birthday every week. Because when you know that a birthday is coming, you can hardly wait until that birthday day arrives because you know that there are special things that fill that day. What if we turned it around and called the Sabbath a delight and called it a day where there were only special things that took place on that day? Things from special dinnerware or only meals that were arranged for that day? Or what if there were only special treats that were given out on that particular day? One thing that I really loved doing with the, our children when they were small was to have a basket 
that would only come out on Sabbath and it was hidden in our closet. And every Friday they would be asking, is it time? Is it time? <laughs> Mommy, is it time? Can we go get it? And I'd say, not quite yet, not quite yet. And they could hardly wait because in that basket were things that they had 24 hours to play with. You know, of course, taking away their sleep time. But there was just that rainbow, that amount of time that they could play with. And in that were things that kept them connected with the Lord in some way or another. I would have in there, uh, like we have a sample of a box down here on the floor. We have things in there that um, are characteristic of some of the things that we would place in a, a box or a container. Everything from dressing up uh, little dolls and things to be representative of Bible characters that uh, they could reenact those stories. We even have blocks in there and they loved playing mm -hmm. uh, the walls of Jericho and how they marched around them and they came falling down. Um, stories from the Bible that they could read, uh, character building stories, color books, activity books, sticker books. Our children mm -hmm. loved sticker books. Mm -hmm. And there would be special markers and crayons and colored pencils that were only in that basket. Only one day a week. Only one day a week. Special drawing tablets that they could go through every week and see what they have drawn in the past. There uh, were also puzzles, felt storybooks, games that the family could play together. And we could go on and on and on. And tucked in there would be some kind of a new little treat or something that could be special for breakfast or something special for lunch or dinner. And then we started a family tradition of always having on Saturday morning a routine of a breakfast smoothie with some kind of a homemade uh, muffin or granola bar that would go with that. And that became a, and still is, a family tradition even in our adult children. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited because now my uh, grandchildren are getting old enough that I am preparing their baskets, their families have asked that I go ahead and start preparing a Sabbath basket for them because they remember what it was like when they had one. That is really neat. I remember when we would be sitting in church and you would bring out this uh, felt book and here, this page here just happens to have a net with the fish in it and there's uh, the disciples and Jesus in the boat. And so they can play with this in their early days and here's this seven days of creation week look at that yes and the things that were in here were all uh, items that would point back to the bible and, and point back to to god and his gift of the sabbath to us through the different uh, you know things that he told about in the bible and things but as they got older then i would start sticking a note inside and in that note would tell them what the activity was going to be for that um, afternoon whether it was going to be a scavenger hunt or whether it was going to be that we were going to have a picnic somewhere and that they could invite a guest because here's the mystery and they had to try to solve a mystery. Just things that didn't take a lot of time, but we would play things like 20 questions. Mm -hmm. When it rained and was cold outside, we played Bible Pictionary. We laughed more times over games and things that we played together. And the Sabbath truly became a delight, not a dread. And that's what we're heading for. And you accomplished it. And now you know how to do it. You can make for your family the Sabbath being the, the very best, the most exciting day of the entire week. I've been amazed at, at how uh, many people fight the idea of the Sabbath. Like they, they turn against it and they object to it and try to find every reason to avoid it, yet it's one of the Ten Commandments. And here's a couple of the uh, objections that are very prevalent today. May I speak to, to uh, a couple of them? Uh, one being, many people say the Sabbath day was changed from the seventh day of the week to the first day of the week. Well, I say, where do you find that in the Word of God? It is simply not there. Malachi 3.6 says, I am the Lord, I change not. In Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not changing. Now, somebody did try to change the day, and this is the most incredible verse. Check this out. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Listen to this. It's talking about the Antichrist. 
And the verse says, He, the Antichrist, shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. It means kill them. And think, <laughs> the key word, think to change times and laws. Why does it say the Antichrist thinks to change God's law? Because nobody can change God's law. I mean, it's God. He set it up. So this Antichrist is thinking that he's changing it, but he is certainly not changing it. In fact, I have friends who have a lot more money than I, who have offered $100,000 to anybody that can come up with one verse, just one verse, that says that God changed the day of worship. Uh, you want to try for it? Try to find that one verse? I'll tell you, it's not there. It's not in the Word of God. Some people say the calendar was changed, and it was. The calendar, calendar was changed. So the change of the calendar messed up the seven-day seven weekly cycle, they say. You know what? The calendar was changed, but it did not mess up the seven-day weekly cycle. So the day that was originally the Sabbath, they say, is now another day of the week. But no, that's not the case. It is true that the calendar went through a change, only one. Pope Gregory XIII reformed the Julian calendar by removing 10 days from the calendar in order to synchronize the calendar with the seasons and the heavenly bodies. But this change affected only the dates of the month, not the days of the week. Just the dates, not the days of the week. So Thursday, October 4th, was followed immediately by Friday, October 15th. So the correction of the 10 days modified the normal sequence of dates, but left the order of the days intact. So calendar change, yeah, but it didn't affect the seven-day weekly cycle. We... <laughs> we point you towards the Sabbath as a day of delight, a day of family togetherness, a day of fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ, with the God of the universe, like you cannot have any other day. Check it out. It works. It's beautiful. It's in the Bible.